So the big news for WWE this week comes in the form of the announcement on SportsCenter on Tuesday that Brock Lesnar is done with MMA. He's officially hanging up his octagon gloves and he is re-signing with the WWE to a multi-year contract. So something that was a possibility, sure, but frankly, as much as people might want to sit there and say, you know, well, you should have been able to see this coming, you really don't know, especially based off of Brock's previous history. There's no loyalty there to him when it comes to the WWE based off of his past. So who was to know? But at the end of the day, he made the decision and probably, frankly, made the right decision for him, made the best decision for himself and his family, uh, both in terms of financially uh, the time that he could spend with his family, and then long-term in terms of his health as well, you know, being able to do what he could do in the WWE as opposed to what would be required of him from a training standpoint and also a fight standpoint in the UFC. So in a lot of ways, Brock Lesnar made the right decision for himself. And for the WWE, there are most certainly some positives when it comes to this news of them being able to come to terms with Brock Lesnar re-signing into a multi-year deal. First, it allows WWE to keep a big name at a time that they desperately need big names. Here's a legit top guy, a legit star, at a time where this company desperately lacks top stars. Another good thing about this now, looking back, is that WWE has the potential to get more return out of ending the streak. It's done. It's happened. I'll never like it. I'll never agree with it. But at least I can sit there and say... I don't have as much problem with it if the guy that ended it is going to be around for three, four, five years after ending the streak. Because again, part of ending the streak and the rationale and the thought process behind it would have to be, at least from my mind, other than Vince McMahon being completely nuts and just wanting to do something because he's senile and impatient, is the fact that you want to be able to get a return on that two-plus decade investment into Taker's streak and the gimmick and the character at WrestleMania. Well, by bringing Brock Lesnar back into the fold long term, you allow yourself to potentially get more out of it, and that's a good thing. And to me, it's a bit of a statement that the WWE still matters. At a time where he had CM Punk leave and he ultimately went to go sign with the UFC, here's a guy that matters more, both in terms of WWE and the UFC, deciding to stay home with the WWE. You know, we can't compare CM Punk at Brock Lesnar because Brock Lesnar is a much, much, much bigger deal, I assure you. I assure you. And the fact that WWE, even at the 11th hour and 58th minute, were able to keep Brock Lesnar in the fold still means that they were able to keep Brock Lesnar in the fold. It was still a statement to me in my mind that the WWE still matters. It also adds intrigue into a main event this Sunday at WrestleMania 31 that so badly and desperately needed it. Now with Brock Lesnar re-signing, and that news getting out there, people are wondering what the fuck is going to happen with the main event. And even if they're not excited about the feud, and even if they're not excited about the match itself, they're excited about the possibilities of what could happen with that finish. This has definitely helped improve the profile of that main event at WrestleMania 31 and the show as a whole. It's a chance for the WWE also to wipe CM Punk out of the record books. He was the longest reigning modern champion in WWE history. Now with Brock Lesnar coming back into the fold, there's a chance to wipe him off the record books, and you know they want to do that, and there's a very good chance based off the way they booked Brock Lesnar that he could end up surpassing Punk's 434-day title reign. That is a very distinct and realistic possibility. However, with some of the positives that you'll notice, even for me, somebody who's not a Brock Lesnar fan, I went out of my way to start with some positives. I have some questions about this. Uh, first, what has Brock Lesnar really brought in his three years? I know it's kind of funny, isn't it? His second run in WWE has been longer than his first run by over a year, and it's going to be even longer. That's something I never thought I would say, and that's kind of cool in and of itself. But what has he really brought to the WWE in three years? How can the WWE really justify the expense for him and the large expense for him for the limited amount of dates and the limited amount of return that they get for him? He's not somebody that's giving you anything in terms of house shows, in terms of the live events. I don't see where he's really been a big boon to your attendance, especially considering I'm not even sure if WrestleMania 31 has officially sold out yet, your biggest show of the year. Something that used to sell out lickety split. You still haven't sold out, to my knowledge, anyways. Maybe they finally didn't. I'm wrong here. But they still hadn't sold out WrestleMania 31, and he's the headline featured attraction of that show. 
And when you look at the fact that they don't always sell out the events even that he is at, that ratings have stagnated still and they even slightly declined. They're not very good. They haven't improved with Brock Lesnar around all that much. How could WWE really justify paying this guy, you know, four, five, six million, whatever it is a year? Are they really getting that value back in return? I really question that. And now, after three years, when you look at some of the names that he's worked with, who's left for him to really work with now? If you're going to say, well, we've got Brock Lesnar around even in a limited role for the next two to three years, okay, who do you have for him? It's just as important as Brock Lesnar is the dance partner for Brock Lesnar. Some of you might say, well, Daniel Bryan. Okay, but we know now that Brock Lesnar is the top babyface of the company, so the dynamics of him versus Daniel Bryan don't really work. You can say Randy Orton, but again, Randy Orton is turned face. You're going to turn him back heel just to face off of Lesnar? Are you really going to turn Lesnar heel when the people are going to want to cheer him, especially now with the news that he's going to be around long term? Who is there for him to really work with long term? You might say somebody like Bray Wyatt. You might say somebody like Seth Rollins, but let's keep it realistic here. Do we really envision those guys of being worthy of Brock Lesnar at this particular point in time? This is a significant question that I have. It's one thing to have Brock Lesnar back in the fold and to have what Brock Lesnar brings to the table. It's another thing to make sure that you get the most out of that. And it's another thing to make sure that you have people that can actually be the appropriate dance partners for somebody like a Brock Lesnar. And can WWE actually book him now as a hero? Because he is. He's the top babyface. He's been the top babyface since SummerSlam, as I talked about before. This whole epiphany so many have had that he's now their top babyface. Where the fuck have you been? The fuck have you been paying attention to? He's been the top babyface since SummerSlam. He has been. I was right about this. As soon as he smashed Cena, he became the hero to every adult male, pretty much. Whether you deserve to be or not. Can WWE actually book this guy like a hero? Can they book him as a good guy? Can they book him as any type of guy, frankly? You know, so those are serious questions. But here's my biggest thing. I just have a lot of trouble understanding things when it comes to Brock Lesnar in terms of for you as fans. In terms of Brock Lesnar and his decision, I think he made the right decision for him, frankly. I, I respect his decision. I think it was the best decision for him. And I think, frankly, the WWE needed this as much as anything else for the statement that it sends. I mean, the fact is they were doing some decision 2015 shit on SportsCenter with their WWE World Heavyweight Champion heading into WrestleMania 31. And even if the story and narrative surrounding that primarily revolves around him not going back to UFC by association, the WWE and WrestleMania 31 has their profile elevated. So at the end of the day, it is a somewhat positive move for the WWE. And I'll give them, cre give them credit where credit is due for getting the job done. See here, I have given credit to the WWE for doing something that I think was overall the best decision for them. Even if I don't like everything about it, even if I question significantly certain things about it, certain aspects about it going forward, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to give them credit, something some of you frankly could learn. Here's what I have trouble with. Here's what I don't understand is I'm the muscle mark, but you're the ones that love Brock Lesnar. I really don't. Have you ever really heard me say much of anything good about Brock Lesnar? Have you really ever thought that I was a fan of Brock Lesnar? But I'm the muscle mark. When you're talking about being a muscle mark, you would think the guy of guys that you would be the mark for, if you're a muscle mark, would be Brock Lesnar, and I can't really stand him. And that even dates back way before any shit with him ending the streak at WrestleMania 30. But I'm the muscle mark, right? So many of you hate the WrestleMania main event this year, but you love Brock Lesnar. I don't understand that. How does that make any sense? You can sit there and channel all your hatred towards Roman Reigns all you want, but at the end of the day, Lesnar's the champion. Part of the reason that main event sucks heading in is because Lesnar hasn't fucking been there and he's been a lousy freaking world champion. You hate the main event at WrestleMania, but you love Brock Lesnar. I don't understand how so many of you claim to hate these part-timers getting this spot, but you love Brock Lesnar when he does it. And crap on The Rock when he sits there and gets the title. Oh, because he beats your hero CM Punk twice. But what the fuck's any difference with Brock Lesnar? In fact, he's even more of a part-timer than The Rock ever freaking was as the goddamn champion. So you hate part-timers getting a top spot. But here's the epitome of part-timer, not named The Undertaker and Brock Lesnar, but you're in love with him being the fucking champion. So many of you, like me, hated the streak ending, but you love Brock Lesnar. I don't know. It just really doesn't seem to make that much sense to me. 
What I don't understand is business really hasn't improved all that much in the three years Lesnar's been around. He really hasn't been that type of attraction that you've been told he has been. He's not that type of attraction that you pretend him to be, but yet you still love Brock Lesnar, even though the returns haven't been what you've been told and you know that they haven't been. So many of you mock Reigns' promo skills and talk about how bad Roman is on the mic, but you love Brock Lesnar. First of all, like, promo skills matter that much to any of you fucks. Second of all, if Reigns is bad on the mic, then what the hell is Brock Lesnar after all these years? There's a reason that Paul Heyman is still aligned with him. There's a reason that Paul Heyman is still his advocate and his spokesperson. Other than the occasional great, you know, badass interview that's pre-taped that Lesnar does, his promos are bad. You give him a mic for 10 or 15 minutes and we know what freaking happens. But I don't understand. You mock Reigns for it, but you don't mock Lesnar for it. You love him. You hate five moves of doom, but you love Brock Lesnar. Let's look at Brock Lesnar's moveset, maybe Jim Cornette style. You've got the freaking jump up onto the ring apron. That's one. You've got suplex. That's two. You've got a Kimura. That's three. You've got the stomp around like an angry guy, four, and an F5. That's five, and I'm being generous here when I throw in the freaking stop. You hate John Cena and many others, and there are five moves of doom. Well, what the hell is Brock Lesnar? His match is suplex, 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 repeat. Suplex, 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 repeat. You claim to love great in-ring action. You claim to love matches that tell incredible stories. You want these guys to do all types of... Same crazy moves, but you love Brock Lesnar suplexing his ass off 30 times in a damn match. You hate WWE's direction as a company, especially heading into their biggest show of the year with WrestleMania 31, but you love Brock Lesnar as the champion, especially when he's been a major problem with the direction of the WWE since SummerSlam because he's the champion that's not fucking there, as I've referenced many times before because I knew what I was talking about. He went from being a special attraction to no attraction to when he came back, he was the wrong type of attraction, and imagine that, that's exactly what the fuck happened. How could you be mad at WWE in the current direction, yet love the guy who in a lot of ways is responsible for the current direction that the WWE has? It makes no sense. You love continuity, but yet you love Brock Lesnar as champion. Now, let me get this straight. I know goddamn good and well that if Roman Reigns was the champion, or let's say a Ryback, or anybody that wasn't one of your little internet indie darlings or Brock Lesnar, and they didn't defend the title in 30 damn days, like let's say with The Rock in 2013, people would be having a holy connection shit fit. But Brock Lesnar could be gone for three, four months at a time, and most of you don't even bat an eye. Continuity doesn't matter, except when it matters. But in this case, it doesn't matter because for some reason you love Brock Lesnar. And you want the titles to matter, and you want them to mean something, but you love Brock Lesnar as a champion. Again, him only defending the belt every three or four months is not a good thing. It's okay for him not to be on the show every single week. I've been a big advocate of that for a long time. But what I'm not a big advocate of is a company that is so geared around their world championship, not having the world champion for three months at a fucking time, where he defends the belt maybe twice or three times in an entire calendar year. How in hell does that make the title mean more? Especially when one of his big matches is with freaking Roman Reigns and all of his other big title matches have involved John fucking Cena. You want the titles to matter more, but you love Lesnar as champion. And it just comes back to the whole thing of maybe me just not getting some of y'all and not understanding what drives hardcore fans. And maybe just the fact that just like me, all of you are fucking idiots and hypocrites too, because we all are. Because when I look at it, I can't understand why so many of you are excited about Brock Lesnar re-signing with the WWE. I don't understand why so many of you think Brock Lesnar is so star-spangled, great, and awesome. I don't understand why so many of you think it's great that he's the champion and want him to continue to be the fucking champion. You've seen how it's been since he's been champion since SummerSlam. It's been shit. And now you're happy about that shit potentially carrying on for another fucking year now? Holy Christ. I don't get it. I don't understand it. But, just like you guys don't understand me sometimes, I guess this is just one of these instances where I don't fucking understand you. I understand what WWE was trying to do here. I understand Brock Lesnar's thought process here. I just don't understand you and why you're so excited about this like this is some great thing.